Hey, this is Never Stop Building, and I am Jason. The goal today is to get this generator running again, get the three phase wired up correctly, and hook up the two three phase tools that we have in the shop, which are the Maranaka blade grinder, and more importantly, the Maranaka super surfacer. So hopefully by the end of this video, we'll, um, we'll be making beautiful shavings. Last we left off this project of the generator, uh, I got it at auction. We were having some trouble starting it on a small tank, but with the big tanks, we got the generator running. I was able to power up a, uh, a 30 amp electric heater. But what we need to do now is, I need to actually wire in the battery correctly, add the gas, you know, replumb the gas, and then uh, let's take this off and um, I'll show you what needs to happen in here. This is more or less how the generator came to us, except I was able to find on eBay at a very reduced cost, a three phase 100 amp breaker that came with a two, two uh, uh, split phase. Well, the battery uh, is charged, that's good. Engine's cold because it's not on. No fuel, so it's not gonna start. So let's hook up the fuel. Oh, this is gross. This is gross. I'm gonna put a very little bit of anti-seize. I don't want these threads fusing together. This is not for sealing, this is for the threads. The sealing is done by this, this brass insert. But I also don't want any of this on that brass insert. I believe we're gonna to try to do a split phase 240 Delta, but I'm waiting to hear back from the guy I bought the machines that I'm powering this, because they came with their own buck boost transformers, which basically tweak the voltage. The three phase in, J in Japan, I think is 200 volts. And the three phase in America is either 208 in a Y configuration or 240 Delta, which I believe is older. This might be already wired for 208, in which case I can just use the taps off the generator as is and be done with it. Don't do this at home, kids. I would describe what I'm about to do as dangerous. There's no breaker. This is just right to the generator. Uh, I've done it before though. I wanna test to see what the voltage is when we turn it on. It should be across one of the three phase legs. Where's my fuel? Oh, come on. Beautiful. So we had 210 volts, which makes me think, as I probably mentioned in that other video, this is wired for 208 Y configuration. Since I'm not gonna be doing backup generator services here, I'm hoping that because the guy I got the machines from was in a commercial shop and 308 Y is 
common, or 208Y is common in commercial settings now. I'm just gonna keep this as is, and I'm not gonna try to, to reinvent the wheel here. See, here's the chart of all the different configurations. What are we running here? T9 and T3 on one of the phases. So let's match it up. Maybe we have one, yeah, I think we have 120 volts phase to L1 to L0 and 208-ish, 200 between them. Sweet. Uh, so the main thing we gotta do in here is we gotta run the tap wires into this breaker and then I'm gonna put a box with a, an outlet somewhere where I can plug in the, the extension cord I got. Oh, well, this is ridiculous. I had this seven wire um, control cable and I'm just using the black and the red wires to make uh, an extension cable for the low voltage power to come from the battery to the, uh, the panel so I can power my uh, three phase monitor. So there's this terminal block up here, which I'm gonna use to have a place to access the battery so I can get uh, 12 volts inside of here. But for now, we're just gonna run this thing to the battery. But Jason, you say, those wires are so thin. That's the wrong size wire. I am aware of that. Now, I understand that this is a 100 amp breaker. And if I drew 100 amps, these wires would probably explode. Uh, but the plan is to draw around 20 amps, which is fine for number 12. And there's actually a, the right size breaker on the panel. So anything that will draw a lot of, anything that will over, if there's an overdraw, it's gonna blow the panel breaker first. And then this is almost like a backup fuse. I mean, it's not ideal, but eventually this is gonna be, you know, an actual 100, 100 amp panel off of this breaker. And we'll put bigger wire in it. Last thing I want to hook up is the control wire. Not, I guess it's not a control wire, but it's it's going to get the battery voltage to our uh, monitoring module that I got to hook up. It wants to be powered off of 12 volts. Now I'm I'm wondering if when I sh shut off the battery uh, cutoff, if it's going to lose the settings, but uh, we'll see. These generators have lots of different taps to the windings that go around the, the actual generator head. And so you hook up different combinations of those taps to get the voltages that you're trying to achieve with the generator.
Okay, there's all the uh, the wires tied into the taps on the transformer, and they're kind of, I use the flexibility of the wire to kind of keep them suspended, so hopefully they're not rubbing into any metal and shorting out. I got this big yellow four wire uh, locking plug. This is how the power is gonna come out and this will be kind of weatherproof. So now we gotta work on the other side of this thing. All right, here's our three phase panel. This panel is about to be a bit of a Mad Max situation. Uh, I have one breaker. We're gonna put one of these uh, twist lock receivers in here somewhere. And that'll basically connect our generator to the bars. I also have this thing, which is really cool, and I gotta set this thing up. And this is a three-phase monitor. I found this on Amazon or eBay somewhere. It's crazy. It's, I literally typed into Google exactly what I wanted to exist, and here it is from the magical lands to the east. You connect voltage, and you connect these current transformers, and it gives you a full readout of uh, voltage current on each leg, the time the things run, the frequency. So you want to keep your phases balanced. Since I'm running just three phase motors, one or another, it's okay. But if I had lots of different circuits in here, some, sing some uh, split phase or some 240, like you could see the draws dip changing on the, on the readout. A little rough around the edges but at least I can access the breaker and it's gonna hold the monitor uh, so it's not bouncing in and we'll be able to see what's going on inside it. Oh that's sweet that's gonna look great. Careful. Kind of hard to see. I am putting these ferrules on the end of the wires and this is doing the job of connecting this signal wire to the uh, current wire. The signal wire is gonna feed into that control box. I'm sure there's electricians watching that are cringing over this, but hey man, it's just electrons. All right, that's, so here we got the signal wires and we got to get our current clamps. So these are going to go over each leg of the three phase and report the current that's passing through them. Hey, all right, check this out. This is the three phase monitor from the magical internet. Uh, so it takes the current uh, clamps, the current transformers. So we got um, common and then one for each phase. And then it takes the voltage input. Uh, I don't have a neutral and I hope this isn't ground. Uh, I'm just gonna not connect that. Uh, and it's, what's cool is it has like an alarm, normally closed, normally open relay. There's a bunch of things I can program in here, like if it goes over a certain threshold, it'll, it'll warn me. And um, what's cool is that generator control panel is super advanced inside, and uh, someday when I get this all like really set up, you know, in its own little powerhouse, you can set these things up so if it detects some problem or fault, it can trip this relay and actually shut the generator down or something like that, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then there's the battery voltage input. So I'm going to wire up these connections and we can sort of put this whole thing together. All right, let's put this panel together. 
This is kind of cool. You can see what's going on inside. You can see all the goods. Nice. Uh, we're, we're almost close to testing this. So let's, let's go over the wall and take a look at these transformers. This is what came <clears throat> with the, these two machines. Trying to figure out, so clearly it takes three phase. Here are, here's the three of them. Ground and three phases. Now, I thought each, there was one transformer for each of the tools, but if you look at what's happening in this box here, what we got are the three phases coming in. So we got one phase goes to this red, which goes to this transformer. That comes back out of that transformer, connects to this red, which goes to the other transformer, the orange, which goes to the outlets, and one of the other phases. And then you have the other phase going into this transformer, which I suppose is the blue coming back out. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, and the blue goes to the outlets, and this black comes from this transformer. I really want to understand what's going on here. They're using, let's see what this is. Square D, Schneider Electric, general purpose transformer. Transformer number two, phase one. They must have, they must, they, there must be some fancy way to use two of these transformers to buck boost three phase. Okay, I, I tore all this apart and did a little research on the old internet. And this is what I came up with. This is the connection diagram. And uh, basically, yeah, there is sort of a common, I don't know if it's common, but there's like a, a specification for using two of these transformers to adjust the voltage on a three phase system. You basically, the chart I found, you look for the combination of voltages you want, and it tells you which transformers to pick. So I'm gonna tear into this and kind of figure this out and see what we need to do. But what's funny is, here, take a look at this. This motor has a spec for 200 and 220 volts. It's a difference of 10 RPM. If we're putting out 210, we might be five RPM, not a big, not a big percentage of that total RPM. And so I'm thinking I'm just gonna run with it. Let me look at the other motor. Yeah, it's hard to see. It's the same situation. I mean, it has a 60 hertz spec and uh, 1705 RPM. I think 10 extra volts will maybe make it spin a little faster. I'm not worried about it. Maybe these motors were designed for 200 volts and, it, and it'll decrease the life a little bit. Um, I do want to get to the bottom of these transformers because they came with the machine and I'm sure it would be ideal to run these at the right voltage. But for now, I'm just gonna connect this panel up. We're gonna get these machines moving. Uh, so off camera, I put this outlet in. It's just in a box here to the side of this going into the three phase. Panel can go on, I can put these connectors in. This is bonded to the ground. I need to get that, I need to get all these grounds on the same uh, ground plane so that there's no loops or anything troublesome. We're ready to go here. Uh, this is our, uh, our input. So that'll hooks up to the generator. And then here is our 12 volts, which will supply power to the uh, controller here. So now when I flip that switch on the generator, we should see that turn on. And then we should be able to fire up the generator and get three phase power out of this outlet. Let's give it a shot. How cool is that? Is it drawing any current? It's beeping, it doesn't like that. Let's check our voltages. There we go, 207, 207, 
and 207. That is annoying. What is that alarm? Is it an under voltage? Probably. Uh, let's plug something in. Uh, I gotta make a cable real quick, so we'll start this up in a second and I'll try to figure out, it's not gonna be interesting. I'm gonna try to program this not to beep. All right, I'm gonna start that generator up. I got, uh, I got my three phase extension cable plugged into the grinder. All right, let's see if this grinder works. Lights on, that's good. Oh, that is cool. Oh, it's so quiet. Awesome. All right, let's test the super surfacer then. Hey, full disclosure. So this is Jason from the future. Um, I lost audio when I was doing that initial thing. It was the end of the day and I was freaking out and super excited trying to get this thing running. And there was a, an issue with where this blade was positioned uh, that kept the sensor from turning on. So now that there's some audio, I'll show you some footage of that, but I'm also going to show you some footage with audio. So <clears throat> we got our power light, auto return. We'll start it up. What? Oh, turn it on, start it up. There's that belt moving. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow, that was a long day. There was a lot of little things to do to get that generator up and running and get these machines going. Um, this video has gone on probably long enough, so I'm not gonna go into the nitty gritty. I'm also exhausted and I wanna eat some pizza. I'll make another video just about setting up and tweaking and fiddling with this machine because it's just such an awesome machine. So this video was much more about the generator. I guess maybe there'll be something else in the future about figuring out those current monitors. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but if you like this video, please let me know. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this content and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.